this has been such an amazing experience, such a hidden gem. Um, to learn so much about the Prime Minister, his museum, seeing some of the artifacts and how well kept they are. We are going inside to show you guys how the place looks like. You are welcome to the home of the late Prime Minister. Thank you, sir. Sir Alaji Abubakar Tapa Obaliwa. Okay. My name is Usama Nuredi. Usama, nice meeting you, Usama. Okay. So give us little okay. like details about this place. Like. Okay. This place, as you can see, it did, it was initiated, or the initiation to construct the place was started in 1975. 1975? On, yes, under General Yabubu regime, his military regime. They initiate the idea in order to honor the late Prime Minister, and the construction started in 1977. Okay. Finished in 1979, which is under General Olushogun Obasanjo's yes, regime. regime, his military regime. It was commissioned on 29 August 1979. Still, it was on that day that it that is open to visitation as a national monument. Shine, up to this day, people still come for a visit. You too also come for a visit. Yes, you are welcome once again. It's Ario Construction Company that did the contract. They are residing at Kaduna State. Okay, I know them. Me, I'm staying in Kaduna State. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's good, it's okay, good. Like, yes, it's good yeah, yeah. That, that you know the place. I know, yeah, yeah. Yes. They construct the place at the amount of 700,000, 700 naira, and 60 gold. And 60 gold, that is then. Yeah. That was then, yes. Wow. As you can see, the value of the currency yeah, yeah, is yeah, yeah. far, far different. Okay. Yes. They construct the place in order to reflect the life and times and the struggle of the late Prime Minister. That was why everything here has its own significance. Like that, okay. Is that thing is his first alphabetical name, Epo Abubakar. Okay, that's. Yes, but it was turned upside down. Why? Yes, it is to, in order to symbolize that he is already dead. Okay, that's why it was turned upside yes, down. Yes, that was why it was turned upside down. And the A was meant to put his state on top of it. So you see the state when coming to Bauchi from five kilometer distance, not to south west east. Okay. But you know, due to due to our religion, you know, Islam prohibits the use of state. Yes, that was why the late India Alaji and Ujumpa. Tell them not to put statue in the state because some people used to worship statue. That was why. But the point is, I'm not seeing anything. Yeah, why the place? The place is like dark. I don't know. Yes. So why is the place dark? Yes. Yes, as I earlier told you, everything here has its own significance. Also, the darkness has its own meaning. As you can see from here to the gate, there is a brightness. While yes. inside is darkness. Very dark, like. Yes. This brightness signifies his childhood and educational background of the late Prime Minister, okay. while the darkness signifies the struggle did by the Prime Minister together with his three colleagues. That's the three premiers that we have before. Okay. Uh, in the north, Awolo, and Markel Opara yeah. in the southern part of Nigeria, including Azikwe as the fifth person. So the struggle they did together with an attempt being in Nigeria from the colonial administration. This is what the darkness is signifying. So the photo of it shows the dark ages of Nigeria under colonial masters. masters. Yes. Yes. Wow. So let's continue. Oh. sign of hope for okay. them and for the people of Nigeria to be free from the colonial masters as they make move. So during this time, people of Nigeria started rejoicing that Nigeria will get it independent. But the British colonists said we are yet to get independent, so we go back into darkness. So the second darkness is a continuation for the struggle of independence. Okay. So the second darkness is a struggle for the continuation of the independence. Yes. Wow. Continuation for the struggle. Yes. A sense of light here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's like there's hope now. <laughs> wow.
English interpretation. Okay. As we all know, Satafa Obalewa was a Muslim okay. and a respected one at that. So, truly, we are from Allah, and to Him we shall all return. Born in 1912, and he died in 1966. As you can see, there are so many oh, different colors on the wall. It's in five different. Nigeria. Okay. You know, we have about 360 languages. Some say it's 400, some even say it's more than 600. But it all signifies the different ethnic groups that we have in Nigeria. How? With an attempt did by the Prime Minister in uniting them a rule without showing any tribalism. Okay, okay. But how? Hey. How does it signify it? How? As because I'm seeing like blue, yes. brown. That was why the the colors different okay. differently okay. to show how diverse we are in terms of cultural uh, diversification. Okay, okay. Yes. What about this this place now? Is we come to that. Okay. The top was remain on roof in order to show how open-minded the late prime minister is. Uh, this is his actual grave. Okay. He was born in nineteen uh, nineteen twelve and died in nineteen sixty six left behind nothing except the one house and the one farm also he left behind 19 children and three wives a lot of wives have died among the children the three that died remaining 16 are still alive 16 yes are still alive. they have a lot of children yes yeah. so he was born here inside this building this is his father's house Malaya Bubu. So this is where he has been born. This is his house. Yes, this is their house. Oh yes. no, no structure of house here again. No. <laughs> yes, because the place is between the Mulwish and reconstructed. Yes. Wow. Uh, he was born in 1912 December 3rd. Okay. Taken to Tabo when he was four years of age. Yes, that's where he did his elementary school at there from 1922 to 1925. He finished there and came back to Bauchi and entered Bauchi Provincial Primary School. He's at uh, Kobe Primary School, that's the best provincial primary here. So he did there from 1925 to 1928. Proceeded again to Katsuna Teachers Training College, which they used to trek from here to Katsuna, from Bauchi to Katsuna. Trek. Yes with their leg back for about 13 to 14 days. Trekking. Trekking, yes. So he did there from 1928 to 1933 where he read geography, history, and English. That was why he was speaking very fluent English. That's his skill. He came back to Bauchi in 1933, that his former school, that Bauchi Provincial, but as a teacher, he started teaching up to where he get to the position of education officer in 1940. That's headmaster. That was what they called him before. In 1944, he was uh, appointed as a general president of the Northern Native Authority Council. Uh, that's uh, one uh, uh, the head of the, the union. In 1945, he went to University of London. That's where he obtained a diploma in education. It's a one-year program, so he came back to Bauchi in 1946 and elected as a regional representative representing Bauchi province. In 1947, he was elected again as a representative of Bauchi Northern Native Authority Council. That's a state assembly and federal representative. From there to 1952, he was appointed again as a uh, minister of Works in Nigeria. So they were the first councils of ministers in Nigeria. 
1953, he was uh, there is a reshuffle of the cabinet. That's where they match Ministry of Works and Transport. He maintained his seat as a Minister of Works and Transport. That's where he extended the means of transportation here in Nigeria, like the railway station that started from Kuru Plateau. He was the one that extended it from there to Bauchi to Gombe, Taraba, Har to Meduguri. From Meduguri to the northwest zone, Har to the past, uh, southern part of Nigeria. He was the one that created Nigerian Postal Agency, so also NPA, Nigerian Port Authority. Also, River Port in Patakot was the second largest port in Nigeria. He was the one that did uh, for years. He even intervened in that Lagos port when he was reps representative. He is in the committee that did that. Yes. Okay. Those are some of his achievements, yeah. yes, as a minister of works and transport yeah. in Nigeria. From there to 1957 on 12 September, that's where he was appointed as the first prime minister in Nigeria, being elected after some month, re elected again in 1960, and re elected again for the third time in 1965. He was assassinated in 1966 on 15 January, following the coup that held all happen in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, That's uh, a short biography and all about the term. As you can see, there is a gap between this lab. Yeah. It signifies this crisis and civil disorder that happened in Nigeria okay, this... after, yes, this gap, yeah. after his assassination. You know, there are so many functions that happen between northern uh, and southern part yeah, of yeah, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. Shinichi existing up to this date. So what is that place? That's now? our exit. Okay, exit outside. Yes, yes outside. Place we are true now. Yes. After this darkness. Like this darkness means the mourners, people who visit the tomb, should mourn along as we move out because he was assassinated. Yeah. So let's mourn as we move out. So guys, this is the exit on. Guys, meet Miriam. Come now. <laughs> Hi, people. I'm by name Yakubu Miriam. So we're on a tour here in Bauchi and we're in this beautiful Tafao Baliwa, late Tafao Baliwa's tomb. So come, let's so guys, see um, more. So guys, if you want to tour Bauchi, Gumbi and all not is just link up. Meet Miriam, you understand? Just give me a one day and I'll be there. Yeah. So guys, walking around the place, I saw some people and I want to like talk to them and interview them and ask them one or two questions about the place. How they feel about Bauchi and the This has been such an amazing experience, such a hidden gem. Um, to learn so much about the Prime Minister, his museum, seeing some of the artifacts and how well kept them. So a lot of people really have had such a but what is it? Yeah, yeah, it's very lovely. Yeah, so it's you're looking for anybody who wants to find out? Is anybody from Bauchi? I come from the north. I from the north. Where do you come from? I'm not from Lagos, but I'm from the east originally, but I live in Lagos. So, um, northern part of Nigeria is like scary. You know, some people are scared of it yeah, because of the stories. Sp yeah. Very good roads. Okay. Straight roads. Straight roads. Straight roads. So, um, Straight roads. Keep watching his YouTube channel, like and comment down, up and down. <laughs>